Hi, this is Eric Martin with Board Game Geek. I'm here today looking at Ennis, designed by Christian Martinez, published by Matigo, and it's big box format for two to four players that plays in 60 minutes. And this game has been in the works for years. I recorded an overview of the game at the beginning of 2014 at the Spielvaren Mesa Trade Fair, and it was the worst table surface ever, very busy table surface with lots of components and things, hard to make out anything that was going on. But the design has been solidified, worked on, honed over the years, and now finally released. How does it work? Here are the components in Ennis, set up for a three-player game. Each player has 12 clan members. You have a number of citadels along with a larger capital building. You have sanctuaries. You have some other tokens we'll get to in later. You take out a number of territories equal to the number of players using either the suggested setup in the rule book or at random and assemble them so that each territory touches two others. You take out the advantage cards specific to those territories and leave them face up. There is one such advantage card for each territory in the game. And as new territories are added to the playing area, you will take out those advantage cards at the start of the round. You have a deck of epic tail cards that come into play based on the actions that people use. You have a deck of action cards, and this is the heart of the game. To finish setup, we're going to determine the Bren, the temporary leader, and that player places the capital building and one sanctuary in a territory. And then players take turns placing two clan members into territories. And you can place wherever you wish. Okay, it's like so and like so. And now we are ready to begin the round. At the start of a round, you determine who is Bren, blue in this case. You determine whether anyone has won, which we'll get back to a little bit later. You are going to deal the action cards. With four players, you have 17 action cards. With three players, you remove these ones labeled four have 13 cards, you will shuffle the deck and deal four cards to each player with one card being set aside. You look at those cards, choose one, pass three to your neighbor. You'll receive three from the neighbor, add those to your hand, choose any two. You don't have to pick the one that you started with. Pass two, get two. Pick any three, pass one, get one card from the hand and now you've got four cards. If you are the chieftain, in any territory, that is, you have more clan members than each other person who happens to be there, you take that advantage card and that goes into your hand as well. You are now going to start taking turns. The Bren has to take the first turn and each card will have either a season marker or a Triscoll marker or perhaps both. And a season marker shows that this card can be played as an action, with the action being described on the card. Triscoll cards are played in reaction to some effect that is described on that card. So the Bren must choose a season card, play that card, carry, the, carry out whatever it says on the card. Each other player in turn has one of three choices. They can play a season card, whether an advantage card, an epic tail card, or an action card. They can pass or they can take a pretender marker. However, you can take a pretender marker only if you meet one of the three victory conditions in the game. One of those three conditions is to have clan members in six different territories, which is impossible on the first turn, unless you get a wildly unusual circumstance to happen with the Epic Tale cards. You can have clan members in territories where there are a total of six sanctuaries. In this case, green has, is located in a territory with five and there's one over here. There's six sanctuaries total. So green could take a pretender marker on their turn. The other possibility is to be chieftain in territories where there are six other clans underneath you. Essentially, you are dominating those clan members. So in this case, we had this situation. I'm chieftain here, there's two. Chieftain here, there's three underneath me, right? Because I'm more than orange, more than green. I'm chieftain here as well. That's a total of six. I could take a pretender marker. 
at the beginning of a round, if only one player holds a pretender marker and that player still meets a victory condition, whether one or more, that player wins the game. If there are multiple people with pretender markers, whoever meets more victory conditions wins. In the event of a tie, if one of those tied players holds the Bryn marker, that player wins. If neither of those players hold the Bryn marker, which is determined, the ownership is determined at the start of the round before checking for victory conditions, then no one wins and you continue to the next round. Essentially, you're saying check. I can potentially win on the next round unless someone does something to stop me. Nothing happens in Ennis without the use of a card, whether action card, advantage card, or epic tail card. Many of the cards have summary symbols in the corners to show plus a person, you're going to add one or more clan members to the board. If you have an arrow, you're going to move someone. If you have cross swords, that's a clash, potentially going to lead to combat. You have a wall that indicates a new territory coming into play. Some cards have more complicated actions and no summary on them. So you're going to play Epic Tale and Advantage and action cards and then do things while moving towards those three victory conditions. One of the basic actions you'll need to know is how to handle clashing. Clashes occur not when someone is placed from off the board into a territory. It's like a new baby arriving and no one's going to object to the joy of a new baby in the hills, although later uh, they might be a killer. If someone moves into a territory though, a clash can occur. Now, if everyone involved, all clan members in there say, I'm okay if you're okay, Okay, if you're okay, sure. We're just all hanging out here. Then nothing happens and the clash ends. If, however, someone wants to proceed, well, then starting with the initiator, the instigator of that clash, you look to the next player in turn order. And turn order is determined at the start of each round by flipping the flock of crows token, which shows either counterclockwise or clockwise movement for both drafting and turn order and play order throughout the round. The next player in turn order, if they want, they can seek safety in the Citadel. Right, putting a figure up here, which is effectively out of play. If they don't want to do that, the next player has that option and the next player has that option. Once all the spots in the Citadels are filled, the instigator then takes an, a maneuver in the round, which can be playing an epic tail card as a maneuver if it is described that way on the card. You can withdraw by taking any number of your figures and moving them out to an adjacent territory where you are chieftain, right? Since you already have control there, you will allow yourself to move there. Or you can attack someone. You choose one of the other players, you. And that player can either remove one clan member from the board or discard an action card. And after that happens, the next player in turn order who is involved with a clash takes an action and at any time during that someone can say are we good here we can we stop fighting now and if everyone agrees whoop, the clash is done otherwise it continues so either cards are going to be bled away from people's hands or the clan members themselves are bled away and even when only one clan remains you can say i'm still clashing and by doing so you can move people to territories where you're chieftain and leave things behind and then we're done. And there's an overview of Venice, which I've played five times now on a press copy from Matago with two and three players. Now, perhaps it's because I haven't yet played with four players other than maybe one third of a game at a press event, but none of our games have lasted the 60 minutes. We haven't even gone more than 30 minutes in any of them. Maybe we're just terrible players who don't know how to play. That's possibility as well. Now, Ennis takes these two concepts and merges them together. A clever use of cards and the trio of victory conditions. And the cards are at the heart of everything that you're doing. Because of course, you are first going to draft them and try to put together a plan for the round. Being able to take a card, but then change your plans based on what you're handed, and then change it again. Try to put something together for the entire round. 
there's a card in there that is effectively a counter spell. It counters one season card that someone else plays. So if you have something that's essential for you to do, and you think someone else is going to do something to stop you, you can have that. You can take a card that lets you get the card that was put aside at the start of the round. Maybe you've deduced what you think that card is based on what you've seen during the draft. And you know you want that card, so you take the action card that will let you grab it. There's one card that will let you dig and take something that's been used previously. There's one that adds a new territory and adds a new clan member in it. There are other ones that let you add sanctuaries to the board. There's a festival card that uh, where a sanctuary is located, a festival takes place, and anyone who clashes there, trying to, you know, it's kind of killing the buzz there, they have to lose a clan member immediately for instigating a clash in that territory where everyone else is just trying to have fun. You have all sorts of different movements and clashing cards. You have cards to use during clashes themselves, and all of those are in play, except for one, which is put aside, but may still be in play, and you have to think about all of that each round. Which cards have been played at which times? What advantage cards are in play? And who's played them at which points? Who has epic tail cards? Because the more cards you have in your hand, the more advantages you have with what you want to do. You can delay by playing and playing and playing and playing and play after everyone else. Now, of course, you can pass to try to play after everyone else as well. But if I pass, then everyone else passes the round ends, throw away all the action cards. And whatever you hope to do is gone. So, you want to take that chance? It's very different in the two-player game because, of course, you don't have a lot of control over whether the round continues. If you pass, that other person can just be like, yep, we're done. Because maybe they didn't have something put together for that round. and They think you do. So we'll just end it right here and be done with that. So then you can't wait. So you want to build up chieftains in different territories, which give you advantage cards, which give you more cards, which give you more control over what you're doing in the game. And that's all merged with this trio of victory conditions, where you're trying to get all of them, possibly. Again, with two-player game, you're not going for being chieftain over six other people. That's probably not going to happen. We didn't have that in the three-player game either. You probably need four players with all these little singleton figures over the board, which is going to give you more opportunities to be chieftain over those people and control them. But we do have the six territories, six sanctuaries. Those are interacting goals that you're shooting for, and multiple people are shooting for in different ways, and where you're taking actions to try to build up toward. And everything is coming together. What do you think other people are going to do? Who's going to pass at which time? And then can the turn get back to you? Or do you want to try to end it? Do you want to try to wait and do the dummy action and hope you get back now and you get to do the real thing that follows up on what you were trying to set up for initially? All sorts of things that come together. And lots of opportunities for plays and surprising plays as well. It's all about having those cards, having control having control. Ennis.